Hi, welcome to module 9. In this part of the lecture, we will identify the comparative features of the lymphatic system. At the end of this presentation, each student should be able to identify the different lymphocenters per animal, compare the gross appearance of the spleen and thymus of the different domestic animals, and identify the additional lymphatic structures in birds. The lymphatic system is composed of the lymphatic tissues or organs and the lymphatic vessels. The system returns protein-rich fluid into the blood circulation that escapes from the blood capillaries into the tissue spaces. The system is also essential in helping the animal's body by providing specific and nonspecific immune response mechanism. Specifically, the system is involved in lymphocyte and antibody production, phagocytosis of particulate foreign matter, and movement of fats from the digestive system to the circulation. There are few variations among mammalian lymphatic organs like in the shape of the spleen and the presence and location of various lymph nodes. Much variation can be seen when we compare mammals from birds as the latter lacks lymph nodes and they have additional structures called the bursa of Fabricius and the lymph heart. Let us begin by comparing the system by locating the different lymphocenters in the body. Lymphocenters are a group of lymph nodes draining the same region of the body in all species. With this, we can discuss them per region. We will begin with the head. There are three major lymphocenters in the head. The parotid, mandibular, and the retropharyngeal lymphocenters. The retropharyngeal lymphocenter is further subdivided into medial retropharyngeal and lateral retropharyngeal lymphocenters. The parotid lymphocenter is consists of one or more parotid lymph nodes at the base of the ear close to the temporomandibular joint and covered by the parotid gland or the masseter. It drains the dorsal part of the head including the orbit and the parotid gland. This lymph node is palpable in dog and in cattle. The mandibular lymphocenter is located ventral to the angle of the jaw. It drains part of the head not drained by the parotid lymph node to the medial retropharyngeal node. It is present in all species and palpable in dog, cattle, and in horse. The medial retropharyngeal lymph node is the largest lymph node of the head and neck. It lies between the larynx and the wing of the atlas and is not normally palpable. It is present in all species. Lastly, the lateral retropharyngeal lymph node is usually absent in dog but palpable in cattle. In the horse, it drains from the guttural pouch. Next, we move to the lymphocenters present in the neck region. There are two known lymphocenters, the superficial cervical lymphocenter and the deep cervical lymphocenter. The superficial cervical lymphocenter is located in front of the shoulder joint under the superficial neck muscles. It drains superficial neck and dorsal thorax along with the proximal limbs. It is present in all species and palpable in dog, cattle, and horse. On the other hand, the deep cervical lymphocenter is composed of cranial, middle, and caudal deep cervical lymph nodes located along the length of the trachea. It drains deep and ventral structures of the neck into the thoracic duct on the left side or into the lymphatic duct on the right. As previously mentioned, lymph from the superficial and the proximal parts of the forelimb drains to the superficial cervical lymphocenter. On the other hand, the lymph from the rest of the limb drains to the axillary lymphocenter. The axillary lymph node is located in the axilla and it drains the forelimb and the thoracic wall including the first three pairs of the mammary glands in dog. It is present in all animals and usually palpable in dog. The accessory axillary lymph node is present in cat and not constantly present in dog and in cattle. The horse has a palpable cubital lymph node as shown here. The walls of the thoracic cavity are drained by the dorsal thoracic and ventral thoracic lymphocenter. 
The organs within the thoracic cavity are drained by the mediastinal, bronchial, dorsal, and ventral thoracic lymphocenters. The dorsal thoracic lymphocenter is composed of the intercostal lymph node located within the upper part of some of the intercostal spaces and the thoracic aortic lymph node dispersed along the aorta. The ventral thoracic lymphocenter is located dorsal to the sternum and lateral to the transverse thoracic muscle. They are grouped in a cranial set in all domestic species with ruminants and cats having a second caudal set of the ventral thoracic lymph nodes. The mediastinal lymphocenter is composed of cranial, middle, and caudal mediastinal lymph nodes which are located in the like name part of the mediastinum. These are present in all species except that the caudal set is missing in dogs and cats but are very large in ruminants. The bronchial lymphocenter is consists of the tracheobronchial or sometimes called the bifurcational lymph node located above the bifurcation of the trachea. They are grouped into a right, middle, and left set of lymph nodes. In ruminants and in pigs, which have a tracheal bronchus, there is an additional cranial tracheobronchial group. These lymph nodes are important for the lymphatic drainage of the lungs. Now we move to the lymphocenters present in the abdomen. The abdominal cavity and its organ are drained by several groups of lymph nodes along the abdominal aorta, located in the lumbar region and at the origin of the intestinal arteries. This include the lumbar, celiac, cranial, and caudal mesenteric lymphocenters. The lumbar lymphocenter is composed of the lumbar aortic lymph nodes that lie on either side of the aorta between the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae. Here are the lumbar aortic lymph nodes. The second group of lymph nodes are the renal lymph nodes which are associated with the renal vessel and drain the kidneys. Note that renal lymph nodes are missing in carnivores. The celiac lymphocenter includes the lymph nodes located within the region supplied by the celiac artery. That includes the celiac, splenic, gastric, and pancreatodenal lymph nodes. In ruminants, the gastric lymph nodes are subdivided in ruminal, reticular, omasal, and abomasal lymph nodes. The cranial mesenteric lymphocenter includes the cranial mesenteric, jejunal, cecal, and colic lymph nodes. They show considerable interspecies variations with regard to the number, form, and location. These nodes drain the small intestines and the large intestines as far distally as the transverse colon. The caudal mesenteric lymphocenter consists of the caudal mesenteric lymph nodes which receive the lymph from the descending colon. Now we proceed to the lymphocenters of the pelvic cavity and the limb. The tributary territories of the lymph nodes of the pelvis often overlap with those associated with the abdominal wall. This is of clinical importance with regards to the removal of tumors of the mammary glands in dogs. There are four lymphocenters present in the region. The iliosacral, iliofemoral, inguinofemoral, and the popliteal lymphocenters. The iliosacral lymphocenter is composed of the medial iliac lymph node which is the main group and are located at the quadrification of the aorta. The lateral iliac lymph nodes are lacking in the dog and cat and are not consistently present in other domestic animals. When present, they are found at the bifurcation of the deep circumflex ileal artery. We also have the internal iliac lymph nodes which are present along the internal iliac artery. The sacral lymph nodes are located ventral to the sacrum, while the anorectal lymph nodes are located lateral to the rectum. The iliofemoral lymphocenter comprises lymph nodes located along the course of the external iliac artery or its femoral continuation. The inguinofemoral lymphocenter includes the superficial inguinal lymph node or also known as the scrotal or the mammary lymph nodes. It is present in all species and palpable in dog, ruminants, and in horse. 
The subiliac lymph node is missing in dog, rare in cat, but it is palpable in ruminants and in horses. The inguinofemoral lymphocenter drains the flank, the caudoventral part of the abdominal wall, the scrotum, and the mammary glands. Hence, the superficial inguinal lymph nodes should be examined and may have to be removed when mammary tumors are excised. Lastly, the popliteal lymphocenter drains the most distal center of the pelvic limb and comprises superficial and deep popliteal lymph node. They are located within the popliteal fossa caudal to the stifle. It is easily palpable in dogs and in cats. Next, we compare the spleen. As you can notice, the spleen is closely associated with the stomach. In ruminants, the spleen is closely associated with the rumen. The spleen is a reddish brown to gray organ depending on the species and is situated caudal to the diaphragm within the left cranial part of the abdomen. It is located entirely within the peritoneum in all domestic mammals other than ruminants where half of the spleen extends into the retroperitoneal attachment zone between the diaphragm and the dorsal sac of the rumen. Different animals have different spleen appearances. In dogs, the spleen is boot-shaped as shown here. In horse, the spleen is falciform or hook-like. In this animal, additional ligament is present between the spleen and the left kidney. This is called the nephrosplenic or rhinosplenic ligament creating the nephrosplenic space in which parts of the intestines can become trapped resulting to colic. In large ruminant, the spleen is like a wide strap, while in small ruminants, the spleen is leaf-shaped as like in the spleen of a goat. In pig, the spleen is long and tongue-shaped, while in chicken, it is spherical like a marble. We can also note some variation in the thymus. The thymus is the control organ of the immune and the lymphatic system. Its importance is greatest in the juvenile animal and accordingly it reaches its maximum development depending on the animal. In dog, maximum development is reached 3 weeks after birth. It is 1 year after birth in horse and 9 months after birth in pigs. After this time, it begins gradually to involute until the animal reaches sexual maturity. As it decreases in size and loses its lymphoid structure, it is being replaced by fats. We can also compare the gross appearance of the thymus per animal. The thymus in general is composed of a cervical lobe, intermediate lobe, and the thoracic lobe. In dog and horse, the cervical part regress prematurely and the thymus is represented by the thoracic part only. In cattle and in pig, the thymus is divided into unpaired thoracic part and left and right cervical parts as shown here. The two parts are joined together by the intermediate part at the thoracic inlet. In chicken, the thymus is represented by lobated lymphoepithelial organ situated caudal to the third cervical vertebra. They lie above the jugular vein on either side and occupy almost the entire length of the neck. We can also add some additional structure in bird related to the lymphatic system. First, they have a lymph heart. A lymph heart is an organ which pumps lymph in flightless birds like chicken back into the circulatory system. This is elongated, dorsoventrally flattened organ located outside the body cavity. We do not have an image of the lymph heart but for orientation purposes, it is situated at the caudal end of the synsacrum, dorsal to the transverse process of the first three caudal vertebra. Another unique feature in the lymphatic system of bird is the cloacal bursa or most commonly known as the bursa of Fabricius. It is pedunculated dorsal appendage of the proctodeum, which is part of the cloaca. Bone marrow-derived lymphocytes mature within the cloacal bursa into the B lymphocytes that are subsequently responsible for humoral immunity. The cloacal bursa undergoes involution at sexual maturity. And that ends our discussion on the comparative anatomy of the lymphatic system.